So in the previous chapter, you had all kind of good results for the classical approach. Now you have one problem after the other. The next one coming is a problem for decision-making under uncertainty by Ellsberg 61, it was introduced. It goes as follows. Imagine there's a known urn K. It contains 100 bowls, 50 are red and 50 are black. So it has a known composition. There's a second other urn, it's called the unknown or the ambiguous urn. It also contains 100 bowls. Also, every bowl has the red or the black color, but now the composition of the colors is unknown. Maybe 10 are red and 90 are black. Maybe 75 are red and 25 are black, can be anything. From each bowl, a bowl from each urn, a bowl will be drawn at random. The color will be inspected and you can win money depending on the color of the bowl drawn. Some notation. Here I denote a gamble on red from the known urn. So this says, if the known urn, the ball drawn from it has the color red, you get 15 euro, otherwise you get nothing. You're gambling on red from the known urn. Or the notation is similar. Now we present a choice to many experiments. So many have presented a choice. Imagine you can gamble on the color from the known urn being red or the color from the unknown, the ambiguous urn being red. Price is always the same, 15 euro. But which of these two gambles would you rather have? And I don't know, you can also think yourself, make up your mind what you want, and maybe pause the video for it. I'll tell you what the majority preference is. So here it comes. Most people prefer it like that. They rather gamble on the known urn where they know the probability than the unknown ambiguous urn where they don't know the probability. We can do the same story for the gambling on black. Of course, black or red doesn't matter. If you can gamble black from the known urn or black from the unknown urn, the ambiguous urn, again, most people prefer the known probability, the known urn, so they have this preference again. Well, these two preferences, as simple as they are, are already enough to falsify expected utility. And more seriously, every model that uses probability in any traditional sense at least, and I'll explain how that works. So let's look at this first preference. Imagine you're doing a subjective expected utility with subjective probabilities, or is actually any model that uses subjective probabilities, then if your decision is based on subjective probabilities and whatever formula you're using it, of course, you choose the one where the subjective probability of the price is the highest. So then that first preference suggests that your subjective probability of red from the known urn is strictly bigger than your uh, second subjective probability red from the ambiguous unknown urn. Black gives us the same equality. The second preference suggests that your subjective probability of black from the known urn exceeds your subjective probability of black from the ambiguous urn. But here with these probabilities, we already have a contradiction because if we look at these two, these are complementary events. Probability should add to one. On the right-hand side, we also see complementary events. Probability should also add to one. But of course, two big numbers can't give the same sum as two small numbers. So already we have a contradiction. This cannot be. This is already enough. It surely violates the subjective expected utility model of savage. And as I said, it's more fundamental. Any model based on subjective probabilities is violated here. So this shows that for unknown probabilities, surely, because, well, normatively, I told you a while back, savage is, in my opinion, the most brilliant contribution in the old field. Surely he convinced me that, rationally speaking, we should do subjective expected value, uh, utility maximization. But empirically, well, this is the prevailing empirical pattern. Surely, empirically, this model is violated. And we need, and we need not only, but every model with subjective probabilities is empirically violated. So when we work with unknown ambiguous probabilities, we want to do empirically realistic work. We need very fundamentally different models than for risk. That's what this shows. From the normative rational perspective, one can quite debate some people say that these preferences are rational, so that also normatively, rationally speaking, it is good to deviate from expected uses and even from probabilities. But other people don't agree. I belong to the people that don't agree. I think rational people should not do this. 
But anyway, surely if you want to do behavioral and purely realistic work, you have to study these preferences and develop models for it. That's uh, the theory of ambiguity, and I already said once, that's a big and very popular field nowadays. Much is going on there. Anyway, the next problem will be for intertemporal choice, but that will be in the next recording.